You may have seen that the government issued its UK digital strategy at the beginning of the month to make the UK a stronger, fairer country that works for everyone and to ensure that the UK is the best place to start and grow a digital business and trial new technology. The key themes of the talk today were Information Commissioner Office investigations. So we've seen a number of cases and key priorities for the Information Commissioner. Now we've got GDPR looming, the consent consultation that's come out recently from the Information Commissioner. We're getting more of a sense of what consent individuals will need to give in order for your organisations to use their data for marketing purposes. The highest number of data breaches reported between January and December last year were data which was posted or faxed to an incorrect recipient. The second highest was loss or theft of, of paperwork. Then next, data sent by email to an incorrect recipient. A failure to redact data and a failure to use the blind copy mechanism when sending information by email. From a marketing perspective, these are the concerns, automated calls, live calls and, and SMSs that are being sent um, by organisations. You'll see here that the total number of, of concerns in January 2017, particularly for automated calls, increased by 40%. The Information Commissioner is looking at security breaches, in particular along with direct marketing complaints and subject access. Brexit, always a good topic to talk about. Now, we won't be in Europe, therefore we won't be benefiting from the laws that, that allow us to uh, transfer data within Europe. There will be a data sharing agreement that's required between the UK and Europe as a way to protect the steady stream of data. And today, in fact, the Lord Select Committee issued a report on the trade between the UK and Europe to protect the services sector and it calls on the government to negotiate free trade agreements to secure the market access and a specific reciprocal agreement on the data sharing. It's unlikely that the UK at the moment would have adequate data protection laws and that means that the laws in the UK wouldn't be essentially equivalent to those in Europe. Clearly we will implement GDPR, however we've got the Investigatory Powers Act which gives significant, um, significant power to the UK government to, to surveillance powers. Therefore the European Commission may see the UK as not having adequate laws and therefore potentially may not allow us to be um, an approved country for transfers. The um, adequacy decision takes between two and three years on average, therefore if we're going to aim to get an adequacy decision from the European Commission, we need to start soon. Latest fines, uh, disqualifications of directors and uh, topical updates. The background to this Dawson Damer case was that a subject access request was issued against to, um, Taylor Wessing. Taylor Wessing said no, they weren't going to respond to the subject access request um, because they were legally privileged, all the information was legally privileged. And they also said in any way it's going to be too difficult, it's disproportionate effort. The court looked at three questions. The first one was the extent of legal professional privilege and how that attaches. Um, the second was what disproportionate effort actually means. And the third was an analysis of the improper motive discretion under Section 7.9 of the Data Protection Act. One other useful thing here was that the court found that Taylor Wessing was a data controller, so we're now not really in any doubt that a law firm will be data controller. We often say, well, it might, you might have 25 years worth of records to look through, but you do have to do it, and now this case will help us to say that may, be, that may require a disproportionate effort. Matt Hancock, one of the ministers in the DCMS, Department of Culture, Media and Sport, announced that at the end of spring they'll enact the power to hold company directors responsible directly for breaking nuisance marketing rules and therefore the fines that are currently applicable to companies, so up to £500,000, will apply equally to directors. So clients need to be looking at their systems and their processes and how they process personal data in, line of, in light of GDPR that's coming into effect next May. The consent paper is an interesting one. This is guidance the Information Commissioner has issued relating to GDPR and GDPR compliance. And the main message is around getting opt-in 
tick box consent for marketing purposes. And if you are therefore going out to get new levels of consent, which many companies will need to, be mindful to record the wording that is signed up to and get it date stamped and really record for your accountability the, the information that's given at the time of consent. How ready is your organisation for GDPR? Are you aware of what it means? Who's preparing your organisation for GDPR? Do you have a project management office who's helping with that? A few organisations will be fully compliant by next May and at this stage we don't have the guidance from the Information Commissioner or other supervisory authorities to actually know what compliance actually looks like. There are areas of GDPR that aren't clear.